A2 further maths, network flows, upper and lower capacitors. So hopefully you've just covered the flow augmentation algorithm, which is the first part of network flows for your second year. And what we're looking at now is what we call upper and lower capacitors. Now all the network flows that you've been looking at, so every single time you looked at a network flow, it always had one number attached to your arc. And that one number that was attached to your arc was always going to be the maximum flow, all right? what you can flow through it. It's always like this number 20 here. Okay, and that's because you had um, flows which could went down and started at zero, all right, that didn't actually flow anything through them at all. So, like an empty road network or maybe an, an empty water system, it doesn't really matter what it is, you didn't have anything as a minimum. Now, in this situation where you have two numbers, you have what we call a lower capacity. Now, the lower capacity is what you can't go below. So in this case, along this arc just here, we have to flow 13, whether it's 13 cars per second, per, per minute maybe, um, or you've got pressure in a pipe, so there's a 13 um, bar through that pipe at that given time. It doesn't matter what it is, you can't flow zero through it. It has to have at least 13, okay? The 20 is what you've been used to. That's been your upper limit we can only flow up to 20. You can't go above 20 because that'll break the pipe or you can't flow any more cars through that, um, that motorway at that point. So you can flow 13 as a minimum, but up to 20 as a maximum. So that's what we mean by the upper and lower capacities. Now, while you're just grabbing your notebook and getting down what notes you need, don't forget to pause there before I move on. Okay, so I've got this network just drawn here. I'll give you an opportunity just to put this down uh, in your notebooks because it's a good idea to have this as an example while you've got a bit of time to do it. It'd be worth just putting that example down and we're going to calculate these values of these three cuts. And you might think to yourself, I know how to do cuts. You know, I've practiced cuts in year one. I've practiced some cuts when I did the flow augmentation algorithm. I know how to do cuts. Uh, the problem is now is you've got these extra values. We want to see how they affect the cuts. OK, so what I'd like you to do is just have maybe a bit of a guess. You don't even need to write anything down. Just have a think. What are these cuts? So this cut here is the one that separates A, which is the source, definitely a source, from B, C and D. Uh, B and C aren't sources, but D's are definitely, uh, C, uh, sorry, sources, they're sinks, is D. All right, so it's definitely an appropriate cut. It's cutting off the source from the sink. Now, when we do a cut, as you know, you're always looking for what you can flow through as a maximum. So from this point just here, along this line, we can flow up to 24 through there and up to 14 here. This five and eight doesn't really affect it at all. So in other words, I could just add the 24 and the 14. 24 plus 14 is going to be 38. I can flow a maximum of 38 through this part of the network exactly the same as a cut that you've been used to. The minimum or the, the lower capacity has no impact on it at all. OK, let's look at the next one. Um, A and B cut off. So it's this line just here, this cut just here. A and B cut off and C and D on the, on the sort of sink side. All right, so that's what I've got. Let's look at the lines it cuts through. All right, so I've got the, the B to D. That's flowing from source to sink. The B to C, that's flowing from source to sink. And the A to C, that's flowing from source to sink. Now, because they've all flown in the correct direction, source to sink, I add those up again. 14, 11 and 12. So that's going to be what? 30, 37. So this can only flow a maximum of 37. So that's a better cut than that one. It's no good being able to flow 38 from there to there because you can only flow 37 through this point just here. So that's a better cut. OK, let's look at the last cut. So this line just here, separating A and C and B and D. Source to sink, source to sink. That part, though, is going from sink back to source. So I need to be careful. All right, this one here. So if I look at the lines, I've got A to B is going to be 24. B to C is flowing the wrong way, and we're used to just ignoring that. All right, you say ignore it. 
and then we've got C to D. Now, the reason why we usually ignore fl ones flowing the wrong way is because we can set those to zero. And so therefore, nothing flows in the wrong direction. But now we have an issue. We can't set this flow to zero. We can set it as small as possible so it doesn't affect my cut or, or at least affect on the cut. So I could put a minimum of eight from there to there. So I could flow 24 from there to there. I could flow 26 from there to there, but I'm going to have to flow at least eight back. So when I come to the cut A, C, B, D, what I'm going to get is these three situations. I've got the five to the 20 floor flow in that direction. So I'll add the 24. I've got the eight and the 11 flow in the wrong direction. So I ignore, well, normally I'd ignore it, but now I need to take away the eight. OK, and then this one that flows from this side to this side, which is 26. So what I need to do is find the value of cut. I do the 24 going in that direction. I add the 26 going in that direction, but I take away anything flowing in the wrong direction. And I take away the minimum capacity. Now, you do this normally. You did this in year one. But because everything was zero here, we didn't even talk about it. We just ignored it. OK, but you were actually taking away the minimum flows backwards. The minimum flows at that point were all zeros. OK, so the value of the cut, be very careful. That's why the examiner loves these, because it's that extra bit of trickiness to catch you out. So what's that value? 24 plus 26 is 42. OK, it didn't, really didn't make much difference in the overall picture of the previous one. But in this case, you need to be very wary of that extra eight. OK, pause there. Make sure you got down what you need in your notebook. OK, quick question. Why is A separated from B, C, D, E not a cut for this network? All right, so that's more of a year one question rather than upper and lower capacities. OK, so if I separate A off to B, D, E and C. All right, so I cut A off. A is definitely a source flowing like that, but just be very wary, A is not the only source. So well done to you eagle-eyed people out there that spotted that E is also a source. So therefore, that cut there does not separate all the sources from the sinks, okay? E is definitely a source, all right? That's got nothing to do with upper and lower capacities, but it is good practice from year one, okay? What I'd like you to do though, is just to have a go at practicing what are the possible cuts? So now I've given you that reminder and you know that A and E are the sources. OK, how many different cuts can you have that separate A and E from B? OK, so have a think about all the different possible cuts and just practice what we've just gone through about making sure they flow from source side to sink side. OK, so pause there. Have a go at working all those out. OK, so let's see which ones you got then. So the AE one. Now, if you've got the AE, we've got flowing from source to sink, flows from source to sink, flows from source to sink. So that's just going to be 14 plus 10 plus 7. Flows from source to sink, flows from source to sink, flows from source to sink, plus the 12, plus 11, plus 5. No back flows there. Nothing flowing from sink to source. So we just need to add them all up. And well done if you got 59. OK, all right. you might have done the same order as me. What else did I get? I got, um, oh, like it says there, what can you deduce? We know that the maximum flow at the moment, the maximum flow through the network is 59. You can't get anything bigger than 59. We know that for certain. You might get something less than 59, but we know we can't get anything bigger than 59. OK, so that's what we know so far from that cut. But hopefully we're going to find a cut that's smaller to reduce that down. OK, so what else have we got then? Um, a, D, E. Yep, so source, source. And then this is the sink side then on this side um, with B and C in it. Right, so I need to just check this one then. Source to sink, source to sink, source to sink, source to sink, source to sink. They're all in the correct direction. They're all flowing in from source to sink. So therefore they just add them up and there's 55. What can we deduce now? The maximum flow through this network is actually 55. 
Okay, so we know now that that's been reduced down to 55. All right, so if we get the 59, what's the point of being able to do that? Because at this cut here, we can only flow 55 through it. Right, what's another cut we could have? Uh, A, C, E. Okay, source side is on this bit, sink is on the middle. So we've got A to D, A to B. Uh, A to C is a bit messy. All right, it's a bit messy because we could do it but it's not really going to be appropriate. So you can just ignore that one completely. Uh, what's this one? This is from source to sink and source to sink, source to sink. All right, so we can add those up. All right, add them all up and you get 62. Doesn't really help, we can ignore that one. Okay, so then we've got A, C, E. Hopefully you got that one, A, C, E with B and D in the middle. And if you've got that one then, again, Nothing's really been tested at this moment. So A to D is source to sink, source to sink, source to sink, source to sink, uh, source to sink. Okay, because this is a sink, everything's flown into it. So that's nice and easy again, 59. What else might we got? Um, everything would be in the middle. So source to sink, source to sink, source to sink. That would have got us 55. Is there anything different? Nope, so that's 55. All right, so really not testing your um, the previous bits. So in hindsight, it didn't actually test the um, going from sink to source, but it did remind you about cuts and um, what they actually mean. All right, so maximum flow of 55. Right, but the reason why we're doing that is because we wanted to look at super sources and super sinks. Now, in this case, it wouldn't be a super sink. And if you're in the class, I'll ask you why there's no super sink. And that's because there's already a single sink so, sink on there. We need a super source because there is two sources. So we need this artificial source just up here somewhere, which we'll call S. That's our super source. And the reason why we do that is because then we can do the flow augmentation algorithm. So our single source floating up there, we need to make sure that this does not affect our overall network so what we need to do is whatever we flow along here needs to be um, not affecting these ones coming out there's no point in only flowing a maximum of 10 through here and that's going to affect e all right so we need to look at what we have to do on these ones if i'm flowing from s to a then i don't want to affect the 14 the 10 the 7 so i can add those together 14 to 10 24 plus that one there is going to get me 31 so if I did that and added it together, then I have to flow at least 31. There's nothing wrong with going higher than that, but there's not much point. You may as well go just 31. Same here. I'm flowing it into E. So the 12 plus the 11 is what? 23 plus that extra 5 is going to be 28. I can't flow anything less than 28 through there because it will affect those. The minimum flow, same idea. 5, 10 and 4 means I should have a minimum flow of 19 down here because then that wouldn't affect these minimum flows just here. Okay, so 19 is the minimum, 31 is the maximum. And again, your minimum could be zero. There's no reason why it has to be 19. It really doesn't make any difference on that part. And this 31 doesn't have to be 31, it could be bigger. So as long as anything smaller than 19 and anything bigger than 31 is perfectly acceptable, all right? Because you're just going to delete this afterwards anyway. In fact, if you're showing, uh, if you're doing this for a company and you're setting it off for their problem, you would probably just wouldn't even mention this. This will just be deleted after the algorithm. Same with this nine here, 11, because it's a six and one of the four. So it's minimum of 11, maximum 28. But again, if you add 10 and 30, that'd be fine. That would work just as well. Okay, so now we've got a single source and a single sink. We can now use the flow augmentation algorithm, which hopefully you practiced in that previous lesson. Okay, so I've just added a few missing capacities just there. All right, sorry, I've just added a few, 22, 16, 10, and four. What I'd like you to do, please, just a bit of problem solving, see if you could fill in the rest of the missing values. If those ones are correct, the 22, the 16, the 10, the four, could you have a go now at filling in the other missing values? So that the initial flow is 45. That's a key fact just there. Okay, so just pause there. See if you could sketch it out. All right, because you're going to be doing some work on this anyway. Sketch it out and put those initial flows in. 
Okay, so just pause if you still need more time. Okay, so we know it's 45. If 22 is flowing down there, this one's going to have to add up to 23 because it has to add up to 45 just there. Uh, if that's 23 flowing into this one, just here, we've got four as the minimum there, so I know what these two add up to be. Um, this one's going to be 10 because it has to be 10. It's an important one as well. Look, minimum is 10, maximum is 10, it's going to be 10. All right, it's a nice easy way of saying that A to B has to be set to 10. All right, it doesn't get adjusted. Uh, if that's 10, and what else have I got? Oh, I've got 11. Remember that these are going to add up to what's flowing into B. So the 10, the 16, the 10 is going to add up to uh, those values. Then I can work out with this line. I could also do this one because the 6 and the 4 add up to make 10. So I know what the 6 was. So I could fill this one in. I could also do this one. 22 flowing in. 6, 10, 6 flowing out. Has to be 6. So you could do them in any order you like. Uh, this one's going to be 10 here because 6 and 10 make 16. And of course, back to the last one, as I said, this one just here is going to be 9 because it has to flow into make 45. So however you did that, it doesn't really matter. There's different ways of doing it. But well done if you got those as the minimum flow. And what you should have is a solution there. This works. OK, this could be what the company has already set is what they're working with. We need to augment it and see if we can improve it. But it definitely works. All these values are bigger than the minimums and they're all below the maximums. OK, the question is then, can we augment it? So we've got the flow augmentation with upper and lower capacities. This is the one that's worth writing in your notebooks because this is the one, the sort of thing you rightly asked. And there is a difference, again, with having those upper and lower capacities. So when we have uh, the situation normally with the 16, what we would look at is what's flowing through it at the moment and what's left over. So we'd have 16 going across and four coming back, right? So we've got what's left, what's been flowing through it and what's coming back. Now this 13 is going to affect that. Okay, so the 13 now has to come into our forward flow and our back flow arrows. And the way we do it is like this, the forward, arrow of what's flowing through so far or what's still left is the same as it was before how much more can i flow through in this direction now i've got 16 flowing for the moment i've still got another four flowing in this direction okay so it's always just the upper capacity minus the current flow flow in that direction that is no different to what you did before okay remember the the same direction is what's left over. What can I still flow through? Now, normally what flows back is going to be what I've used so far, which is the 16. But think of it this way. That's what you've used so far. And this is what you can reduce it down by. Now, that 16 can't be reduced down by 16. All right. Normally we could reduce it down by 16 to get down to zero, but we can't do that now. That 16 can only be reduced down by three. So this arrow bound back is what you can reduce it down by. So it's a current flow minus the lower capacities. It's the difference between these two numbers. All right. Difference between those is four, difference between those is three. These two numbers should always add up to the difference between those two. Okay. And again, if you remember when we did it before, we didn't have a minimum, these two should always add up to that one. Okay. And that's because you had basically a zero in there all right so always think of it the same way you must get the arrows right okay because if i do if this three is a mistake maybe in some ways you've seen it before it's sometimes good to reduce things down maybe that 16 is causing a problem maybe it needs to be reduced what we know is we can only reduce it down by three though okay so that's why we consider having these forward flow and the back flow arrows okay right pause there make sure you've got down what you need in your notebooks there's some important facts Just said that about madding together. It's always the difference between the upper and lower. Right. So we're going to go back to our diagram. That's our situation. That's what we've got the flow so far. That We know that works. And what we want to be doing now is we want to be looking at doing our flow augmentation. So I'm going to just change my arrows over. I'm going to make sure I know how to do it. So this 23, for example, I know I can still flow another five through the pipe there. And I can reduce it down by 12 
and it would not affect this 11 at all. OK, so I know I can still flow another five through it and I can also reduce it down by 12. Five and 12 add together to make the difference between those two. All right, which is 17. Same with this 22. I could increase it by nine. So I've still got nine that I could potentially flow out from S to A, but I can also reduce it down only by three. Notice this 10 has got nothing flowing in that direction and nothing flowing in this direction. You cannot touch that at all. It's got zero and zero. What I'd like you to do, please, is sketch out yourself, add your forward flows and your back flows. If you're really not confident you want to see the answer first, that's fine. But I'd rather you have a quick go yourself and see if you can figure out some of these arrows. OK, so have a go at that. All right, pause if you want. don't want to see the answers yet. OK, so I've got the nine and the three. OK, I've got, I've got to keep guessing which ones I put in next. So I think it's this one. So we talked about those, five and twelve. Um, not sure which one's next, so we can see if it's this one. We can go six. We can still flow another um, eight up to that one, flowing down to one. Yeah, that was a good guess. There we go. Get another eight, flow down to one. Uh, this one was zero, zero. Um, yep, I guess that one was correct as well. I'm going to guess this one. Six, I can still flow another one through it. I can reduce it down by two. Damn it, it was the wrong one. Never mind. That had six and six. Uh, this one, we can go backwards so just be careful we can still flow in this direction another two because we've got 10 plus the extra two but we can also reduce it down by four in this direction uh, there we go guessed right i'm gonna go for this one just to make sure we've got nine we can still flow another two because it can go up to 11 but it can reduce down by eight so we've got eight that can go backwards is that right yeah that's a good guess go for this one uh, we've got four can't be reduced at all so the back flow is going to be zero. We're not allowed to reduce it, but I can still improve it by five, though. So I'm going to go for one zero. Uh, this one or this one, I'm not sure what's next. next. Let's go for this one. Um, it's got 10 flowing in it. We can still flow another two along the same line. So we can still push two in this direction. That's why it's important to this direction. But backwards to cancel it out, we can drop down by three. So there we go. And then finally, I've mentioned this already. We could definitely still push one through that pipe and we could definitely reduce it down by two. So there we go. All right. So well done if you managed to get that drawing just there. Looking at that. OK. So now what we want to do is we want to look at doing the flow augmentation. Can we figure out any flow from the source to the sink? Doesn't matter how you do it. Can you get from there to there using any of these arrows? It doesn't matter whether we go back on ourselves or anything like that. All right. Is there anything we can flow from S to B? All right, and it's up to you how you do it. All right, so we're looking for that maximum flow. We want to fill our table in. What's our augmented path? So the first one I'm going to do is S to E to B. So if I just go think about S to E to B, I can I try keeping it as simple as possible to start with. I can flow five down there and two down here. So I could definitely push another two down those two pipes and increase it by two. So what does that do then? Well, that means that, that five now, I have used an extra two, so I've only got three left in that pipe and I can reduce it down by 14. Remember that what you take off there, you add to this side and vice versa, okay? These two should always have a difference of 17, all right? So add, take a two off there, add two on here, okay? Same with this, this two now goes to zero, that's good. Remember, the zeros are the important ones, but it means I can reduce this down by 10. Notice that 8 and 2 made 10, 10 and 0 makes 10. Right, so that's locked that off. I can't do anything with that now. Right, any other ways to get from S to B? Um, I could just go, I can't go across there, that's no good. But I could definitely go from S to A to D, or maybe I could do S to E to C to B. So a couple of options there. Uh, S to A to D to B. How much is it can I flow there? Quite a lot actually, isn't it? Nine that go there, eight there, and six there. So I can flow at least six through those pipes. So at least six. Uh, what would be left? Three. What would this go to? Six plus three is nine. So these two swap places. That goes to three, that goes to nine. Okay. Uh, what about this one? Well, if I've got eight, I use six of it. I've only got two left I can still use. Uh, but I can reduce it down by the six plus this extra one, so that's seven. 
Uh, then it's into the, into this bit. So that's going to say I've got six I could flow. That's going to go to zero, and then I've got 12 left. I can reduce it down to 12. So you know, six and six makes 12. 12 and naught makes 12. It's definitely certainly correct. Um, and that's it. All right, another zero coming into the mix. That's really good. That's sort of stopping. Notice now that we've only got really one potential path into the source, and that's this one. Okay, so I might need to think, is there some routes that get to use these up? I think there is, isn't there? S to E to C to B. S to E to C to B. That would work, wouldn't it, for one? So what's that do? Three goes down to two. Uh, 14 goes up to 15. I can still reduce it down. Uh, one gets used up, so that goes to zero. Uh, but this zero means I can reduce it down to one. So those two sort of sort of places. And this one... I did have two that could flow into it. I've just used the extra one, so that goes to one. And that means I could reduce it down by four later on if I need to, okay? And this is still the only area that could be have an improvement. And I think, now it's this three, one and one, I could actually just do that S to A to C to B. So that is the final one I could do for one. What does that do then? Well, if that three goes down to two, that nine could go up to 10. OK, uh, these two are going to sort places again. So that one will go down to zero. That two will go up to three. All right. So there's nothing left in the pipe. but I can reduce it down to three. And then finally, this one, what's left now? Well, I've used two earlier. Now I've got one. Now I've got another one. It goes to zero and this four would go up to five. OK, so just check your maths. And that could be faffy with the flow augmentation algorithm, but it is logical. Just take your time with it and always consider your two numbers. Always consider these two should add up to the same as all the ones that we crossed out below them. OK, right. So once I've done that, there is nothing else that flows from source to sink because I've got a zero, a zero, a zero, and a zero. In fact, that's the cut just there. All right. Which showed that minimum. Also, there's the cut there that uses this zero, which showed the minimum. All right. That cut that went from there to there. So you can see where those cut values demonstrated and crossed over with the actual flow augmentation. They show where the minimum values are. Um, you can check your maths as well. We had an initial flow of 45. Add these together, add them onto the 45, would mean 47, 48, 49, 55. Oh, 55, the same as the cut we had earlier of 55. What can we say then? We've got a cut equaling the flow, so therefore we know it's the very maximum flow okay so show that potential flow at the end remember that we have to go back and consider what the minimum flow is and this is where you need to look at your two diagrams so the minimum flow plus what's left over what we're using which is the back flows add those together and that will get you your actual values so for example on here we've got i'm just going to put them back on just to show us without getting too messy these were our originals of our networks this value that goes back is what we need to add to it so we can say that we've got the four plus the three means that this would be definitely for a flow of seven okay let's go for another one so in this case it definitely has to have five plus the extra seven so that would add together to make a 12 okay let's just see there you go so we've got 12 thrown there this one 10 Plus zero is definitely going to be 10. Uh, I'm going to go for this one. Hopefully this is the next one, I guessed. Uh, it's got a minimum of six. We've used an extra four. So that's going to go to 10. Let's ignore that one. Let's go to this, 10. There we go. This one, minimum of four. Plus we use the extra one. So that's going to be five. That was 11 as well. There we go. And then this one, seven plus the extra five that goes back would get me 12. And then seven at the bottom. So that's your maximum flow. Maximum flow was the original 45 plus the two plus the six plus the one plus the one. And we can see that is 55. And the maximum flow must equal the minimum cut. So one last part that you might just be asked about is nothing to do with upper and lower capacities, but it is to do with restricted nodes. So normally in a situation like this, you know that to flow from 4A to B, you have a maximum flow of 15. To flow from B to C, you have a maximum flow of 12. But let's say, for example, you have a situation where the actual B value itself 
is a restriction. So an example could be like this. If you imagine that A, B and C are doorways and these are the corridors between them. All right. So between doors A and B, the corridor can only handle 15 people. Between doors B and C, we can only handle 12 people. But let's say B gets replaced with something like a fire door, gets reduced in size. So it's actually it's the doorway itself that restricts the flow. All right. So it's a node that restricts the flow, not just the corridors. And so this this is what's happened in this situation. All right. The node B has restricted the flow. Now, that's going to cause all sorts of problems when it comes to things like cuts, because you can't put a cut through that B. All right. You can't do the flow augmentation algorithm. So it makes everything a lot more tricky. Now, the way you do it then and what you should do is actually separate out that node. So when you've got a node that's restricting you, so that you can do all the things like the cuts and the flow augmentation algorithm, everything you know how to do, what you need to do is change it. And you can change it by doing that. You can separate out the B, just call them B1 and B2 for argument's sake, and you can put an arc between them that shows that there is a problem with that. That is a restriction between there. And then, of course, you can see that the cuts of this situation can be cut straight through. And we can see that a nine is causing the uh, jam and you could do it with the cut and you could do a flow and everything else. OK, so that's it. That's just one extra little bit that sometimes comes up that you just need to be aware of. If there is a restriction on the node itself, you have to just separate it out. So just pause there. Make sure you just got a little note of that. In the rare situation it's come up, you can come back to your notes and just see what to do. OK, but don't forget to practice either from the textbook or from your sort of work packs. Practice some of those flow augmentations with maximum and minimum, sorry, upper and lower capacities.